Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome, welcome back to another Sunday, which means it is time for another Nas Watches. Jahi Sama will not be defeated. Apologies for the lighting. My, we had a power surge, and my ring light has gotten has just been burned out. So I've, I've got a new one coming. Won't be here till Tuesday. So fun. Ah, boy. But yes. Yes. In the last episode of Jahi Sama, um, well, Jahi was fucking poor. <laughs> Jahi has no money, cause because she lives in a capitalist hellscape. Yeah, it's like the second worst hellscape to be in. <laughs> Someone's gonna take me seriously one of these days. Oh, it's not gonna be fun. Um. Yes, and also we got introduced to a new character who I thought they were going to have a similar thing to Jahi and just be a dog. But no, they're just incompetent. Honestly, I feel like some missed opportunities, but hey, whatever, how you, how you do. But let's get in here and let's see how things go, shall we? Judging from the first thing of here, we're starting with Jahi at work, so only shenanigans can ensue. So let's go in three, two... One, and... go. Extra large bit? Jesus fuck mother in Christ, those are some... Damn. Damn. My man, you're gonna let you... <laughs> you're gonna let your boys fucking... Your, your boy order for you? Jesus. Is that a thing in is that a thing in in Japan? Where like one person orders for everyone? You just like you, you tell your mate your order and then he tells the waitress. I bet you it don't come with a fucking raise though. Bet you money. Um <laughs> but, uh, okay, but yeah, but in every restaurant I've ever been in the States and back home, um, like, that'd be weird, you know? Like, because it's always, like, because the, the, the wait staff always is like, like, so it's like, alright, what, what do you want? Alright, you want a burger and, some, and a Coke? Alright. What do you want? Alright, chicken? Alright, what do you want? Potato salad? Right, alright. Be here in 20 minutes, be glad if I don't spit in it. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's just, it's just weird to me, you know? Just... I... I don't know. Maybe it's just a Japan thing. Or maybe it's just an anime thing, and I'm looking too far into it. Uh. I just realized there's a lot of um, shots of uh, Jahi's bare feet in this show. I wonder if this is like a Nagatoro situation where the, art, where the mangaka has just done a lot of porn. I, I, I can't believe I forgot to mention that when I was actually doing the, the Nagatoro um, series. But yeah, the author just has done so much fucking porn, it's ridiculous. And a lot of it is Guro, which is real not great. Oh boy. Like, I ain't, I ain't gonna... I ain't gonna judge no one, but fuck me, dude. And you could live under a bridge... I mean, you have a mana crystal now. You could probably fucking, like, cast lightning bolts at people.
<laughs> well, at least Jahi is teaching everyone the the number one lesson. Fuck the police. Wait, did nobody question that he arrested a fucking half-dressed woman in her late 20s and fucking wound up with a fucking child? <laughs> Not today, pig! Because she was that tired. Guardians? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, okay, what? What? <laughs> Jahi gets deputized. <laughs> okay, Jahi, if you're going to be working with us, here, here's your handgun. Make sure you point it at anybody who you feel like. It's the only rule. <laughs> I mean, you've barely got any magic left, my girl. Holy shit. Also, since she's got that big mana gem now, couldn't she just vaporize the cop? That's a dude! More like, more like child sex offender. I feel like, I feel like that man in a, in a, in a playground, that man should go to jail forever. JAIL FOREVER! You're going away for a long time, sir. <laughs> so he does recognize that she's shrunk. Okay, then. Uh, I do like how even if she's in her adult form, the cops are basically treating her like a fucking child. How often is it in Japan that children turn into adults? Oh fuck, she's got the Rona! Six feet, motherfucker!
You think she could afford the fucking plan, mate? Jesus. She's gonna get sick, isn't she? She's gonna get sick and it's gonna be absolutely worse for her in that. That's not how that works, but okay then. I mean, she could have legendary resistance. Who knows? There it is! It's a poison of the human world. Truly, this place needs to be destroyed. Yeah, it's because you had infinite magic power in the demon world, you fucking moron. Uh... Couldn't she just channel magic from her mana crystal to try and overpower the cold? Oh boy, Vertigo, there you go, that's the good shit. I really want her to just see the magical girl, but I also want the magical girl to suffer just as much. Druge, probably. I bet if Druge saw her like this, it would immediately be like, Oh, I get to take care of my lord. Ha! Oh, going to coom! Like, honestly, being able to take care of her lord would probably, honestly, probably make Druze really happy. Because I imagine from her perspective, she lives to, she lives to serve Jahi, right? Oh. Ooh. Hey, there she is. There's the, there's the boss. I'm sorry for coming in, but yeah, I have a key anyway. So why not? Sure hope she wasn't u she's not using what little rice that Jahi has. Oh boy. I, I like to imagine the boss looked in Jahi's fridge, saw that it was fucking empty, and went, Jesus Christ, do I not pay you? Holy shit. Ah, she does care. Oh god, those those fucking cold head patches, man, those things are fucking great. Like when I'm sick, I I fucking love those, but they're like fucking ten bucks a fucking pop. At least down here they are, holy shit.
Like at CVS, they're ten a pop, and at Walmart, it's like fucking. It's like twenty bucks for five. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Costume change. Bet she's not gonna fucking wear it though. And for fuck's sake, grow grocery shopping. They care about you, you dumb bitch. Please be Druge. Oh, that's worse! I have to defeat Brazilian Knight. <laughs> no, because you're like at least half the size and three cup sizes smaller. This fucking theme for this. Okay, how does she have power still? That's what I want to know. Jesus! Can she not use the mana crystal to fight? You leave me no choice but child abuse. The ultimate power. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! I seem better, honestly. <laughs> Go directly to jail. Do not collect 2,000 yen, you fucking bitch. Okay, so either Jahi's just really fucking weak. All those cops are ridiculously strong. <laughs> Pay no attention to that small puddle of pee over in the corner. <laughs> she, she didn't pee herself at all out of fear. Aww. What's her name, Rio? I I like her a lot, you know? Like, she's horrifically violent when it comes to Rent Day, but... I don't know, like, I, 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 it's kind of nice how, like, in her own kind of weird way, she does actually care about Jahi. I like that a lot. Ah, oh, she's so evil when she's when she's asleep. <laughs> Taste my crocs, you bitch. I like how even in her dreams now she's matching herself in the lolly form. She's just so used to being in it. <laughs> hmm. I wonder why.
Oh boy, I wonder what post credit shit they're gonna have this time, huh? Okay, um... Uh, alright, so we've got another character added to the roster. Was not expecting the magical girl to be, like, this early in, you know? Like, I was expecting, like, the child characters to be introduced before her. But I do appreciate that even though she did show up, Jahi has... Jahi has the squad. So, there you go. And from this ending, it looks like she gets her her dick kicked in fairly often. So you know what? That's fine. Works for me. Like. Hmm. Okay. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my thought. Like once we actually get past whatever's at the end here. Because we got like fucking three and a half minutes, Jesus. King of sports. So are these actually in the manga or are these um, anime only? The Mysterious Stranger! That's it folks, Dead Eye is down again! <laughs> Well, at least they shook hands, you know? Shows a definite improvement on their, uh, on their relationship. <laughs> Imagine if this was an actual fucking storyline in, in WWE. Fucking John Cena's landlord or some shit comes in. Pay your rent, Cena! Never! Well, that makes Cena a heel or a face. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about current day wrestling, honestly. Can you really pay rent if you're asleep from a sleeper hold, though? Or unconscious? Irish whip! There you go! <laughs> oh, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> I don't think I'll judge the episode as a whole based on these ending things, because they they're probably anime and I'll probably just judge them separately, though. Ah, oh, I was waiting for the handshake, damn it. Tune in next time where hopefully we won't get fucked up by women's fucking golf. 
Jahi-sama does not seem to stand a chance. Oh no. Okay, um, but yes. So I'll judge the, the wrestling bit separate, because it's if, it's... if it's anime only, which, like, I've been told that most of the post credit stuff is, then... Uh, okay. So... I like the... Okay, so I like the overall theme of this being... Um... Jahi still being absolutely fucking terrified of the magical girl, which is, you know, entirely reasonable, just, like, judging by what happened to her to get her to this point. Um, I really like the the fake-out at the start, right? Like, you know, like we're going through, and it's just Jahi trying to get uh, mana crystals and, you know, having to deal with the cops, you know, um, and then she hears about the magical girl, she freaks out, she goes in, oh no, it's just some weird, weird dude who should probably not be around children anytime soon. Um, <laughs> like, and that's really fun, and I, and I like that a lot as a fake out, because, <sighs> okay, there's, there's, so there's two ways that, like, you can do a fake out like this, and they did it the correct way. So, you can do a fake out like this and then and have it be just like, oh, ha we wasted your time, you fool. And just use it as like an extender to an episode. But here they actually used it in a pretty good way in that right? it helps like emphasize Jahi's paranoia about the magical girl. Like she's in her adult form. She's arguably at her most powerful as she can be right now. Go, smack that bitch up, take care of it, fuck, 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 this problem needs to be solved now. She gets there, jumps at him, oh, it's just some weird dude, okay. And she's there, shell-shocked, she's like, oh, fuck, that could have been really bad. That could have been really bad. And, of course, you know, you've got, like, the thing of, you know, Jahi getting arrested every now and again, and... Uh, boss and Ryo not really being big fans of that. Um... <laughs> and I guess it also establishes the, um, the, the cops as characters, which I guess is fine. Um, and I, I do really, really, really like that as a, as a starting thing. It doesn't take too long, doesn't eat up too much of the episode, but it does have a very nice little, um, moment in it because it does establish that despite the fact that she argues with her landlord a lot and they basically get into fisticuffs at the start of every month there is a little bit of mutual respect a little bit of friendship there you know like jahi like jahi's able to make friends at the very least which you know that's good and even if though she is like literally evil alignment you know, maybe there's hope that maybe she can actually be a decent person. Because I feel like Jahi can be a decent person. She's shown it before. Um, and that leads us, like, directly into the next episode where Jahi gets sick because of her own fucking hubris. Um, and I, I just really like that in general because it serves two purposes here. Like, first, it shows us that Jahi is... One, Jahi is still extremely, really, 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 like, up on her own hype. Like, she, she's like, oh, the only people who get sick are people without magic power. What the fuck? <laughs> then she immediately gets fucking sick. <laughs> because she doesn't have any magic power, and she keeps forgetting that. Um, that, honestly, I really like, just as, just as, like, a, like, if you can't do it too often. Because otherwise you run into Butch Hartman syndrome. But it does work as a thing every now and again. It's like, ah, I'll never get sick. I want people who are weaklings get sick. Oh shit, I'm weak. Right. Fuck. Um, and it, but also, yeah, and that's really just funny. And it and, and it has like a it has a two pronged thing here. So one, it shows that um, Boss and the landlord really, really do care for Jahi. Like, I mean, they care enough to come to her house bring food, give her the day off, and despite the fact she was laughing at the landlord the entire time she was sick, she still comes over, makes sure she's fine, gives her, like, a cold patch for her head, boss makes her some lunch, 
they make sure that she's not going to fucking die and overall take care of her in a really sweet way, honestly, and is pretty good. And it also allows Jahi to spiral a little bit, and Jahi doesn't nearly spiral enough because Jahi's entire character is that she really does need to self-reflect and recognize where her weaknesses is, weaknesses are there. Um, and she doesn't do that nearly enough. And that is a little bit of the charm of her character, but her being able to do that every now and again does help humanize her a little bit. Um, her fears about Druge were... Well, one, I feel like they're unfounded. Uh, but to Jahi's perspective, they're not. And it gives us a very, very nice look into Jahi's headspace and where she is as a as a person. Um, like, personally, I, I think if Druge knew... I, honestly, something that I might have done, um, if I... Like, so, okay, two things here. One, I'm assuming how Druge would act, which, you know, is not great because I'm not the I'm not the writer, so you know, Druge could act a complete different way and I would never know. And two, I'm assuming that the author does not have some sort of plan for Druge that is going to do what I'm thinking of better. Um but what I would have done is I would have had like um the boss and the landlord come in, do their thing. The boss is like, okay, I have to go open the bar because I have to do it by myself. And Rio has got to go do some maintenance on apartment 101, right? So we can't keep you, like, and this is probably after the magical girl bit. Uh, so we can't keep an eye on you. So what we did, we, 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 caught, we looked in your address book. Because I'm assuming she has an address book. I don't know. Um, and we looked in your address book and we saw that you have, like, one person listed there. So he gave her a ring, and she's gonna come over. And Jahi's like, who the fuck's in my address book? Like, she's, like, mentally out there. She's like, oh, who the fuck is in my address book? Drew shows up, and Drew's just, like, doting on Jahi and making sure she's fine and being like, ah, uh, some evil curse has come over you, Jahi-sama. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Just go and fucking ham on it, like, completely misunderstanding the situation, thinking, like, there's some powerful fucking warlock or something doing whatever. Like, that's what I would have done. Because I think that would have been sweet and eh, uh, but but the way they but the way that they that they had Jahi uh, reflect on it worked really well. Like, just just would not be what I would have done, um, which is fine. Like whenever I say that, it was not what I would have done. Like that's fine. People have different writing styles. <laughs> um. The Magical Girl sequence, I forgot to talk about that, but, so the Magical Girl sequence is really good because it serves as a, god, I hate using this word now because it's poison, it serves as a really good subversion of the first half of the episode. So the first half of the episode, Jahi is more or less at the full amount of strength that she can muster in her current state with, like, you know, the mana crystal she has, she goes in, she's about to kick some Magical Girl ass, oh, no, it's, it's just some guy who's on a list now. Oh, gee, wasn't that? exciting and a little oh boy but then it's jahi at her absolute weakest she's sick she's got no a bit she's got no magic at the moment because she is completely fucked up and she's mentally weak and she's physically weak oh god oh fuck magical girl is here what's jahi gonna do and having it just be like she's gonna use the power of friendship like and i mean that like literally as in her friends come and save the day and that Honestly, for a, like for a character like Jahi, for like a comedic situation, com comedic show like this, and with that sort of situation, that works really well. Like the like it kind of yeah, and it kind of is ironic that the literal the literal power of having friends is what fucking defeats the magical girl on this one, and because that's kind of the reverse of how it usually fucking works, isn't it? But. I don't know, I like that a lot. That was fun. Uh, that was cool. Uh, I I'm trying to honestly I'm trying to think of anything I didn't like in this episode, and I can't really think of anything. All I can think of just is like basically continuations of of missed opportunities from previous episodes. Like once again, the Druge thing. I really want the Druge thing to come to a head. I I really 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 want Druge to find out how Jahi lives. Jahi to be freaking the fuck out, and for Drews to just immediately be, just return to her normal servile nature and be like, 
like, hey, you're working against such adversity, Jahisama. How how admirable or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Like, like, because I feel like Druj could like literally justify any of Jahi's shortcomings as as working with with um shortcomings or working with a with some sort of handicap. Um, like it's it's really one of those things where it's like you could do this in so many ways. I want to see how the author does it, and I'm kind of getting impatient. Not in a bad way, in a, I am so interested in this, please tell me what's going on, but that's not going to happen anytime soon, is it? But, oh well, that's, that's, just, that's just how it be. So, I think that's all I have to say for this one. God, my hair's all tangled in the back. Ah. Um, so that's all I have to say for this one. So let me know what you think of this down there in the comments, whether you liked it, you disliked it, or you want to bring up something I forgot to talk about, which is entirely possible. And if you want, you can always support me on Patreon, which is linked down there in the description and on the end card down below. Oh, boy. Uh, sorry, it's a fucking, on the, in, the description, in the description down below and on the end card at the end of the video. Oh, sorry. Oh, boy. <laughs> Autopilot doesn't always work. Um, and if... And big thanks to everyone who does that. You guys are the absolute best. Uh, you keep the channel running, and they're the reason I'm going to be able to replace my ring light. Big thanks. Um, as always, everybody, uh, if you want more content from me, I do try and post anime every single day at around noon, and I try and live stream every single day. If you're watching this the day it come out, which is, I believe, September the 5th? Yeah, the 5th. Then I am going to be streaming... Final Fantasy VI at around 3 o'clock, and hopefully I shall see you there. Um, yes, as always, I will see you in the next video, but most importantly of all, become a trash mammal today, and I will see you a round.